And joining us now is the new leader of the National Party, Judith Collins. Morena. Oh, good morning, Colin. Congratulations. Thank you. Now, third time lucky, what do you think the difference was for you this time? Well, it's the right time, and um, I believe that the caucus thought, well, I was the right person for the job at the right time, and I am absolutely 100% ready to go. Well, I've always started, actually. A divided caucus, a party in disarray, is this a poison chalice? Well, the party is very united. We want to win. We want to take the issues to the government. And as we know, the New Zealanders are are facing absolutely unprecedented, in our lifetimes anyway, economic times. Sure, and And, and I will get to the economic discussion, but is that credible to suggest that the party is united? We know that there was obviously huge division with, with Todd Muller taking over the leadership from Simon Bridges. Mark Mitchell standing against you, that doesn't suggest a party that is united. Well, I think that the party is very much united, and if we ask the volunteers, we ask the members, and we look at that caucus, all standing with Jerry and me and the team last night, that looked like a pretty united caucus to me, and it looked like a very good team. Will there be a reshuffle? There'll be a minor uh, reshuffle, and that's just because Jerry and I are obviously shifting positions, and we just need to make sure that we do some accommodation around that. I think I'm going to be pretty busy in Jerry up and down the country, and I think it's really important that um, the big portfolios that we got, that we have, and particularly what I've got, get uh, someone else to look okay. at. Okay. Can Michael Woodhouse stay in his position as the health spokesperson, given he criticised the government over its handling of COVID-19 privacy, knowing that Michelle Bogue had been providing COVID-19 patient details to him and Hamish Walker? That is a very good question and one which I'll be answering um, pretty soon once I've had a look at the facts. So I have no I had no oversight of that and I have none of the facts on that other than what I read in the media. So I'll be talking to Michael today. We'll be getting some information on that and then I'll make a call on Are you comfortable that. with what you have seen from Michelle Bogue, Hamish Walker, Michael Woodhouse in relation to the release of COVID-19 patient details? I'm absolutely not at all comfortable with it. And when we had 18 people, private information released in that way, um, I thought that was extraordinary and I've never seen anything quite like that. And we, uh, I'm taking this very seriously. So is it tenable for Michael Woodhouse to stay as your health spokesperson? Let me have a look at the facts first, and um, I'll discuss that, but I think we'll, we'll see what happens today. Do you have any concerns about diversity on your front bench? Well, um, I, I'm not particularly worried about that. Um, my concern is that we represent New Zealanders, and not only diversity is not just in race, um, and it's not just in, in age or in... Uh, Gender, diversity is also in diversity of thought and I think it's really important that um, when we're looking at this that we actually have the team that's going to best represent New Zealand. Okay, because you said at the time of the debate around the front bench with Todd Muller you you questioned whether there was something wrong with you being white. Well, is there? Is there something wrong with being white? But that's not the point, is it? The question is about when the statistics (laughs) show that Maori and Pacific Islanders and others are so disadvantaged that they need representation? Well, I think we know that because I certainly know that. I mean, my husband is someone. Are you there? Yes, <clears throat> sorry about that. Um, yes, my husband's Samoan, and um, we've certainly seen uh, some of the um, bigotry over the years, so I think it's really important that we address these issues. And I think, you know, everyone knows that it, it's important to not only look like a representative, but actually be representative. I mean, we've got a government with three competent ministers and the Prime Minister. We've got a a team that's actually very competent, the whole lot of us. The issue with you making comments like that is more about, I think, what worries some people is that that it ventures into what some describe as the culture wars, virtue signalling this type of argument. Is that an area where you are interested in, you are worried about, or is that a distraction? I have to say, I think most New Zealanders aren't worried about... um, things like culture wars or whatever, what they're really worried about is the fact that a lot of them are looking at losing their jobs through no fault of their own. And that's what my big focus is going to be. We're, we're going to have a minor reshuffle, which has to happen, and I think you're going to see that our team comes out of it even stronger than they are now, and they're really strong. Shane Retti, will he move to the front bench? 
Uh, we'll discuss that. Um, Shane Reese is someone who I think is an outstanding New Zealander and MP, and I think he's one of our standout people. Let's address the issue of dirty politics. Arguably, it's a, it, some would say it's dirty politics that have got you where you are now because of what happened with Hamish Walker and Michelle Bogue. But do you resolve from your actions in 2014, your association with Cameron Slater, uh, that style of politics? I think you clearly uh, read in my book, which I'm sure you've read, um, Corin. Not yet, there. I'm afraid, sorry. Oh, you need to. You don't want to worry it's about on the, it. It's on the reading list, rest assured. Um, no, 2014 books are so old, old style. It's best to have this new book I've put out. Um, look, the fact is, is that uh, people say all sorts of stupid things. And I also think, too, is that we don't want to have that sort of um, culture anymore. It's very important in our national party that we're focused on the people, on the, on the New Zealanders. And you can't actually be focused on New Zealanders when you're busy playing politics. One of the things I've learned over the years is you only ever learn from your mistakes. You don't learn from your successes. And the National Party is very focused on not repeating any mistakes. That's interesting, because people want to know that, don't they? They want to know that, do you accept that you made mistakes during the dirty, dirty politics era, that you have changed, that, that, that things will be different? I think one of the big things you learn um, from those mistakes is don't put things in writing, or don't even say things, actually, frankly, that you don't, you know, you just think are a joke. Um, don't do that because a lot of people will read them later and think it's not. Oh, that so funny. you don't think you did anything wrong during that period? Did I say that? No, I didn't. I think it's very important, Corin, that we are focused on the people. You can't be focused on the people when you're wandering around playing politics. So you accept that they made you did wrong during that period? Oh, I think it was pretty clear that um, the whole culture at that time was one that wasn't um, necessarily conducive to doing the best that we could. And I think it's important that we move on. And frankly, I have. You've highlighted the economy. How would you, and as a Prime Minister, address the massive gap in our economy that's been left from tourism, export education? How would you drive growth? Well, I'm not going to count it all today because obviously we've got a series of policy announcements coming up and speeches where they will be outlined much more fully than they can at the moment. But We're only about so 60 much. days from an election. Don't people... I know. Isn't it time to start rolling this stuff out? And, and we are, and we have been. Um, some will have to be... Well, I can uh, see re- five themes, and that's it. Yeah. You, some will have to be re-announced, and that's going to be coming up very soon. I think it's very important that we focus on uh, cutting costs wherever we can, but at the same time, in terms of business, at the same time, encouraging business, and looking at, for instance, a smart um, policy around borders, so that we can safely bring people in at the right times, only with safety to New Zealanders, but at the same time that we have to look at other industries as well as our current ones. We've got some things we're going to announce. RMA reform is a big issue for me, and I think it's something that the party is absolutely up for. Just looking at your record, you've done a Masters in Taxation, haven't you? Yes, I certainly have. So I wonder whether you believe, realistically, looking at New Zealand's future with a $50 billion debt looming, that has to be paid back, can that realistically be done without raising taxes in the future? One of the best ways of doing that, um, and it can be done, is actually to grow the economy. If we grow the economy, then we have more money coming through in taxes, but we also have more money in people's pockets. It's, um, it's a virtuous cycle, basically, and that's the secret. The secret is not ripping money out of people's pockets. That they've, that so you think we money. can grow away the debt, so to speak? We can grow away a lot of that, but at the same time, we're at an opportunity now in New Zealand with infrastructure needs that we have and the fact that we have opportunities around that, addressing it, investing in our economy through infrastructure and keeping people in work. We can actually do this. Corin, it's not an easy job. That's why you've got the experienced hands in charge. OK, let me put it another way. Can we deal with a $50 billion debt hole, in your view, without cutting services? We can't go around cutting health services, for instance, or education services. What we can do is we don't have to have 320 working groups under a national-led government. That's, a, that's an opportunity. So we have opportunities there, but we have to have, going into this election, announced, to be announced in various stages, um, a very clear plan the way forward. And one of the things we're not going to do is not going to hobble business and hobble New Zealanders who are trying to get ahead. OK, so no tax increases and no service no. cuts. I will not be 
the Prime Minister who increases taxes and I will not be the Prime Minister who cuts our health services. Will you work with Winston Peters? Well, we have worked with um, Mr Peters' party for various pieces of legislation in the last three years and will no doubt continue to do so. The caucus has made a call on that. There's no change in that. We also believe that this election is an opportunity for us to show New Zealanders what we can do. They make those choices ultimately about who comes into Parliament and we don't even know if New Zealand First will be back. Looking at the COVID response, you mentioned about borders. Is there something you would do differently when it comes to managing uh, managed isolation? Would Yes, there have been some bungles along the way, but in the end, would you have actually done anything differently? Well, we're going to be looking at that. I think there's some things around there, such as if you're going to put people into managed isolation, that you don't um, have one hotel and then you, with a plane load of people, then another plane load comes in and they go into that same hotel. You mess up all the quarantine times. It just looked like um, you know, a complete muddle. And we saw that with people escaping and people getting on various things and, and cars and going on road trips. Look, it just looked like a mess. And the fact is New Zealanders need to feel very confident. I thought that in terms of our health response, that was very good. People were able to feel safe. But we can't be in lockdown forever. And we, as a country, we need to be able to not only just trade, but we also need to have international students and tourism. OK, so what sort, of, what sort of measures would you need to see before you would be comfortable opening the borders? I mean, would you need to be... No community transmission with the country that we would open the border with. Have you got some ideas as to as to what would be the criteria? Well, we're going to have um, we'll have an announcement on that soon, and I think it's very important that we think that all through very very carefully. But there will be an announcement on that in the near future about what our plan will look like around the borders. Just back to the economy. I think I saw a tweet from you last week about the TY Point aluminium smelter. Would you save that? I don't think that New Zealanders can be held ransom um, by Rio Tinto, a big international company with $8 billion um, profit last year. I was one of the ministers who had to sit in Cabinet and listen to why we were um, bailing them out last time, and the decision was then made that it was the last time. The issue with TY Point at the moment is that the government has been in communication with the owners of TY Point for a long time now, and that they have not actually come up with a plan or certainly haven't vocalised that plan as to what to do with the thousand people who are directly um, di- directly impacted and the 1,600 people who are indirectly impacted. Um, I'd like to see what plans they've got for it because I can tell you this, it's not, a, it's not an area of the country with mm. 2,600... A lack of planning, around. but... But just to be clear, yeah. you you support the government's clear signal well, that they're not going to provide more money. Well, New Zealanders do not like being held to ransom, and um, we're not stupid. Your approach to this campaign, you've talked about holding Jacinda Ardern uh, to account. Todd Muller, when he took over just a few weeks back, said he wasn't going to be opposition for opposition's sake. Will you do? Will you be doing it differently? Well, I'll do it the way in which I um, hold, I've ha- have held ministers to account, which is focused on the issues, so focused on the facts and asking the right questions. But in terms of opposition, I think I've been very clear, well, I have been very clear, that where Jacinda Ardern and her government has done something right, I will be the first to say so. I like to give credit where it's due, and I think that it's very important that we do that. New Zealanders want us to act like adults, and they want us to be able to be in charge, not playing silly games. And you think you can win? Of course we can win. Every I woke up this morning, Corin, and I just thought, right, here we go, and we're just going to do it. Judith Collins, thank you very much for your time. Judith Collins, the new National Party leader.